What is up? I have an interesting game for you today. And we're talking about the power curve of tennis ball. Now, I don't hit tennis ball in the early game. But a lot of pack uh, 2 players used to always want to go balloon. And I was like, nah, I think tennis ball. Like, I just want my lives conserved. Like, I'm trying to get to late game. And now a lot of people do take tennis ball. I believe it's correct. But tennis ball has a weird, uh, a weird power curve. I want to talk about where, in turns one and two, it's very good. You just basically you get two mosquitoes, you know, for two gold. Oh, something I do want to talk about here is I'm gonna, I want my beaver stats on these moths, so I'm gonna buy moth, combine my ducks, and then. I at least always get the beaver stat on a moth, which I'm happy with. If it hits both, that'd be great too. And it does. And it's a throw round. Works out nice. I'm going to overstat my duck. But later in the video, we'll get back to the, the in-game power curve of tennis ball. Uh, I do. My opponent didn't throw around. You know, people forget. Sometimes it just doesn't matter. It is sheep talk. He is a really good player. I think he's in the 2000... I think this game was like a 2000 level ranked game. Maybe it was like 1950 or something. But yeah, I'm going to go hatching. I'm pretty much going to buy everything. I have a level 2 duck cell here. Go beluga. Surely I take the shrimp. Yep. Freeze good cells. Now, a lot of people might overstat this Beluga Sturgeon by putting the hatching on it. I realize he's not going to have anything that's going to deal with this 6-5. So I'm just going to put my hatching on something else. Just have a 5-7 instead of overstatting my 6-5. Works out. Round's not even close. He is holding his triples for some reason. Yeah, and double shrimp. And I, I wanted to pill this beluga, but I'm not going to greed and roll for it. It's fine just to sell it. It's like the moment there's something else you want in your shop, just sell it. Don't greed for the pill. If there was nothing else I wanted, then I would have kept them. Probably going to take this meat bone. I love a good meat bone. Probably freeze roll it in case I hit something else I want to keep. Pretty much another shrimp or a moth. Even like a, I might end on a beaver. Or a uh, chinchilla, something worth selling. Otherwise, I'm always taking the meat bone and hatching. Kind of balances out his attack with his HP. Having garlic on turn 4 is busted. Yep. Another hatching. Don't mind if I do. Hit our moth triple. And everybody knows I level on the 4th spot. Because that's where the good luck is. And it's true, I hit buffalo. This game does end up being such a high roll buffalo game. Here, it's better tempo to combine the shrimps and keep the hatching separate. But I know I'm going to be keeping this hatching and looking for the triple. Where I might sell the shrimp individually next turn for something better. And I'm, I'm already, I have enough lives. I'm not super worried about the tempo. I'm just playing for a better long term. And this is, like, just these two things here are a high roll. It's absurd. Like, just having my, in, what I want to buy, sell for my buffalo in the start of my shop. Don't have to worry about anything. Just chinchilla, like, if you can hit a lot of chinchillas with your buffalo, you are doing fine. And I hit another chinchilla. It's super rare to get two buffalo procs a turn, but chinchillas are the way you can do that. We're not taking tennis ball yet. If he had turtle, if he had leveled into turtle, I would have taken a tennis ball because I would think he might pill it. But he didn't, so it's still just go balloon. And I, if I hit a better toy next turn, I have no quarrel with just like taking a garl melon instead and scrapping this balloon. I'm okay with just throwing away. But it, I, I like having this toy a lot. Because if I level these shrimps in the Moza, I can instantly get Moza value the next turn. I always try to take a toy on six if I have a triple set up. Yeah, and we're doing just fine. We're going to level on four. Uh, chicken over eagle when he's this low is probably wrong. 
but I, I kind of just take it as an insurance policy. If he does hit and starts coming back, I have the chicken. Upscaling all things in my future. The only things I'm for sure keeping is Buffalo. Like, everything else I could sell. This gold works out. Another game plan I talk about a lot is when they're playing pack one and they're going a big tier three, your out is exactly this. Go any tier four that you can get your hands on, you could scale. Like, Llama or Buffalo work the same in this instance, and look to salt it. So now I can always trade this Badger. Yep. Get there this round too. He's on lethal. Now it's just smooth sailing. Here I make a mistake. I, I don't think ricing the shrimp right away is necessarily a mistake. And it's, it's really a very inconsequential mistake. It was a one gold error, but I end up finding multiple things I want, so I'm just going to sell the shrimp. And it's just, I'm minus one gold for this turn, for buying the rice. Which, a lot of people might double down. And I'm not going to double down. So yeah, I, I would have one more gold here. I, I think it's important in this game, to, when you realize you make a mistake, to be okay with correcting correcting that mistake in the same turn. Like, I understand I mess up, and I just roll with it. It's perfectly fine. This positioning is horrible, but I don't really care. I have a chicken, I have a caterpillar. I'm basically trying to win two turns from now. Excuse me. And we hit the best thing you can hit with a buffalo it's a dragon. Take this dragon. Freeze our tier 1s. Take my salt. Rolling for a chocolate or better equipment. And I hit another buffalo. Um, I decide, you know what? I could scale this buffalo fast. So I will. With the dragon, and I'm, I'm already meeting these three buy cells a turn. So I might as well have a buffalo that's getting more stats out of it. And just win a stat war. Now I have all these tier 1s frozen. I didn't want to cycle them yet because I'm waiting for my caterpillar tier up. There, I could have built the chicken, but I'd rather have the money, honestly. Like, this is the board. And now I just cycle everything. Normally, I wouldn't go for this level on the other buffalo, but the gold's going to work out perfectly where it's just a why not. It's actually, there was a reason not to take it, but it's fine. I'm far enough ahead, and I'm committing to both of them. I feel like it's okay. And I get Scorp scammed and skunked on. He's doing his best to fight back. He has to play with scams, but I have the ultimate answer to his melons and Scorp scam. The tennis ball. This is what I'm talking about. This is what we've been waiting for. The power curve of tennis ball. Like, it was bad... For like most of the, the mid game, but now it is honestly, I think the best toy I could hit right here is tennis ball to his specific board with this many pumas. I can kill a scorp, I can get rid of melons, and that's the only thing that could ever win him the fight is the scorps and the melons. Freeze other scams, freeze levels, and then look at this fight. Oh, let's take it off fast mode. Look at this tennis ball, he just gets barraged. Everything gets hit one time, at least. We kill the Scorp, we remove the melons. Double skunks, not enough. And we win. And that, we would have lost that fight without Tennis Ball. We could have probably still won with another toy, but Tennis Ball for sure gets us there. It kills the Scorp, it removes the melons. It's something to keep in mind. It, it comes back around late game. Just having, you know, like a lot of pack one players like to go big scorp just so they can have a melon remover in the late game. It's like that where you don't, I said big scorp, I meant mosquito. It's like that where you just don't have to go a big mosquito, but you get all the upside. Something to keep in mind. Thanks for watching.